Hello students, welcome to Biotech Academy. Today we'll discuss about acids, bases and buffers. So first about acids, in order to categorize any substance as acid or a base, three different concepts have been proposed each with their own limitations. So the first is Arrhenius concept. Second is Bronsted Lowry concept. And third is Lewis concept. We'll discuss about all three concepts one by one. So first about Arrhenius concept. According to this concept, an acid is a substance that gives H plus ions when dissolved in water, whereas a base is a substance which gives hydroxyl ions or OH minus ions when dissolved in water. All right. So according to this concept, an acid ionizes to form H plus and A minus ions. All right. In water, whereas a base ionizes to form hydroxyl ions in water. So this is an acid according to this concept and this is a base. According to this concept, the strength of the strength of an acid is dependent on the ability to form H plus or OH minus ions. And according to this concept, weak acids or weak bases do not dissociate completely in water whereas strong acids or bases they ionize completely in water. Now when I was discussing about the properties of water in my previous lecture I discussed that H plus ions these H plus ions have a strong tendency to get hydrated so in case of acids also in because these are dissoci these are dissociating in water so these H plus ions they have, they have a strong tendency to get associated with water molecule and these exist as hydronium ions. So these H plus ions, these H plus ions combine with what, water molecule to form hydronium ion and these exist as hydronium ions. So these are hydronium ions. However, there were certain pitfalls which were associated with this concept. So the number one is it only defines an acid or a substance based on its ionization product in aqueous solvents. All right. So it does not take into consideration the substances. It does not define substances as acids or bases in non-aqueous solvents. However, there are many substances which are acids or bases which behave as acids or bases for that matter in non-aqueous medium as well. So it is beyond the scope of this concept. The second part is, the second pitfall or drawback which is associated with this concept is it does not explain the acidic behavior of certain salts like aluminium chloride. Aluminium chloride AlCl3 it is an acid in so, uh, solution form, but it is not forming, it does not have any hydrogen and it is not forming H plus ions also. So, this acidic nature of this salt is not explained according to this concept. And the third one is, according to this concept, neutralization process can occur only for those reactions which can occur in aqueous solvents or aqueous solutions whereas there are many reactions or salt formation takes place in non-aqueous medium as well. So these are the three drawbacks which are associated with this Arrhenius concept. All right now coming to the next. So the second concept was proposed by Bronsted and Lowry. According to this concept, according to this concept, an acid is a substance which donates 
H plus ions. Whereas a base is a substance which accepts H plus ions. So an acid is a substance which donates H plus ions. Whereas a base is a substance which accepts H plus ions according to this concept. So for example HCl when combines with water it forms H3O plus plus chloride ions. Alright. So here in this case HCl is donating H plus ions to water. So this is an acid. Whereas water it is accepting it is accepting the hydrogen uh, the H plus ion from acid and form and is forming hydronium ion. So water is a base in this case. Now let's look at let's take a look at the other example. NH3 ammonia plus water. Now ammonia when combines with water it forms NH4 plus plus OH minus. Now see in this case. In this case, ammonia is accepting one H plus ion from this water molecule and forming ammonium ion. So, this is a base here because it is uh, accepting a H plus ion. Whereas, water here is acting as an acid because it is donating one H plus ion. So, it is an acid. Now, so from this, we can conclude that water can act both as an acid as well as a base. Alright. So, but there are certain limitations in this concept as well. First, it does not explain the reactions between acidic and basic oxides which do not involve any exchange of H plus ions. And second, it this concept also does not explain about the acidic nature of certain salts like AlCl3 as this was also a limitation in previous Arrhenius concept this limitation exists here as well like BF3 these behave as these salts these salts behave as acids in aqueous medium but there is these do not have any hydrogen ion and so they, they are incapable of donating any protons. So this these things are also beyond the scope of this concept. Now the third concept which was given by Lewis. According to this concept acid an acid is a substance which accepts a pair of electrons so here the, this uh, concept explains defines acid or a base in terms of exchange of electrons so an acid is a substance which is accepting a pair of electrons whereas a base is a substance which donates a pair of electrons so acid according to this concept are electro files because they are accepting a pair of electrons whereas base are substances which which uh, which accepts ele uh, electrons so these are nucleophiles so these were the three concepts these are the three concepts which defines an, any substance as acid or a base Unless otherwise mentioned, among all the three, Bronsted and Lowry's the theory is the most widely accepted theory. Unless it is specified that a particular substance is a Lewis acid or a Lewis base. Alright, so these are the three concepts for defining any substance as acid. Now, let's talk about pH. Because pH is one of the important terms which uh, the value of which defines any substance as acid or a base. So pH is also known as potent of hydrogen uh, sorry potent of H plus ions. 
so p the definition of this is term ph is the it is defined as the negative logarithm value of h plus ion concentration right so ph is the negative logarithm value of h plus ions concentration so the more h plus ions means the ph value will be less because it is negative logarithm value and the ph scale ranges from 0 to 14 so the lesser the ph value the more acidic the particular substance is and the higher the ph value towards 14 it is basic in nature and ph value of 7 is considered to be neutral okay now how do we define strength of an acid as i have mentioned that bronsted and lowry is the most widely accepted theory so according to that concept strength of an acid is dependent on its capa capability to donate hydrate h plus ions all right so uh, the more easy the so the strong acids strong acids donate h plus ions very easily and these strong acids they dissociate completely whereas weak acids they have lesser tendency to donate H plus ions so they have less tendency for donating H plus ions. Similarly, strong bases are those which can, which have a strong tendency to accept H plus ions, whereas weak bases, they do not have that much tendency to accept H plus ions. Now, strength is also dependent on, it can also be defined on in terms of the dissociation constant so strength of an acid or a base is directly proportional to the square root of dissociation constant so what is dissociation constant for in for an acid ha when it dissociates into its ions H plus and A minus, these remain in the state of equilibrium. Means the concent for strong acids, the concentration of the initial acid is equal to the concentration of its product ions. And Ka or equilibrium constant is written as concentration of products upon concentration of reactants. So, Ka is H plus concentration of H plus into concentration of A minus upon concentration of HA where Ka is the dissociation constant of dissociation constant of acid. Right. For base BOH it the generalized equation is BOH dissociates into B plus and OH minus ions and KB or dissociate equilibrium constant is written as concentration of B plus ions into concentration of OH minus ions upon concentration of BOH and KB is known as the dissociation dissociation constant of a base all right now uh, based on this Ka value and Kb value means based on the dissociation constant of an acid or a base we can say that the weak acids have a weak acids have smaller Ka value whereas uh, strong acids have larger Ka values. Similarly the Kb value for weak bases is small and 
KB value for strong bases is large. Now, uh, there are two important factors which determine the relative strength of a base. So, there are two important factors which determine the relative strength of base or acid. So, number one is the strength of an acid does not depend on its concentration in solution but on the number of H plus ions present in it. So, the first important point is the uh, strength of acid is dependent on is dependent on the number of H plus ions not the concentration and second is when we dilute upon dilution upon dilution of acid its strength increases and concentration decreases. Now, this is a very important thing that upon dilution strength is increasing. Why? Because upon the strength of an acid is the number of H plus ions concentration and on dilution in order to attain equilibrium the acids dissociate further into its component ions. So, the number of H plus ions increases upon dilution. So, hence the strength of the acid increases. Whereas, the concentration of the acid on a whole, as a whole, it declines. So, upon dilution, the strength of an acid is going to increase and the concentration is going to decrease. So, these are two important things to which determine the relative strength of an acid. Alright. Now next we discuss about conjugate acid base pairs. Conjugate acid base pairs. What are conjugate acid base pairs? The, ba the acid and the base pair which differ just by a proton or an H plus ion, they form a conjugate acid base pair. For example, acetic acid and acetate pair. Acetic acid and acetate pair. Means CH3COOH gives H plus plus CH3COO O minus. So this is an acid because it is donating an H plus ion and this is a base. So these the differences of just single H plus ion. So these form a conjugate acid base pair. Let's not talk about buffers. What are buffers? Buffers a solution that contains a solution that contains weak acid and its conjugate base pair or a con or a weak base and its conjugate acid form a buffer these solutions these solutions they resist change in ph upon addition of small quantities of strong acid or a base so these are known as buffers now why do buffers resist change in ph Buffers, these resist change in pH. Why? Because for as we have already discussed that weak acids have smaller Ka value. Ka value is smaller. Plus because the composition of the buffer is weak acid, weak acid plus its conjugate base, these form the buffer components. And the concentration is also approximately, the concentration of these is approximately same. Alright, in buffer, so the K value is smaller plus the concentration of the buffer components are also same. Based on, because of these two things, upon addition of 
small amount of strong acid or a base, these buffer components react with those acids or base and cause a very little change in the ratio. So the ratio of these buffer components changes to a very minimal extent and hence the H plus ion concentration is also, uh, I mean the change in H plus ion concentration is also very little and thus the pH value. So, so these uh, raises change in pH, two important things because of the smaller pH value and because of the same similar concentration of buffer components which uh, which combine with the acids or base upon addition and uh, the ratio remains unchanged and hence the pH value is also not, does not alter much. Alright, so these buffer solutions, these buffers are very important in biological systems because they perform a wide range of functions in biological system. For example, in maintaining the blood pH or maintaining the physiological pH of an, if any cell for that matter is maintained by the buffer. So these buffers perform various functions within the living organism, within the living cells. Alright, next we discuss about henderson hazelbach equation. This is one of the very important aspect Henderson Hazelbach equation. So what does this equation describe? This equation describes the ratio of acid and its conjugate base in a buffer solution and helps us to determine the concentration of these components at various pH values. Alright, so So, if this is an H acid dissociates into H plus and A minus ions, so the Ka value will be H concentration of H plus into concentration of A minus upon concentration of HA. Now, if we take, take log values on both sides, it, it becomes pKa is equal to P, uh, sorry, first we'll write the log value, log Ka is equal to log H plus, plus log of A minus upon concentration of acid. Now, if we rearrange the equation, negative log of H plus is negative log of Ka plus log of a minus upon H A and negative log of H plus is also known as so this is also known as pH which is equal to minus p k a plus log of A minus upon H A concentration or we can also write as pH is equal to minus pKa plus log of conjugate base, conjugate base upon acid. So this is known as henderson hazelbach equation. Right. Now, this is very important in identifying, in calculating the concentration of the conjugate acid or a base at various pH values because there are certain acids, there are certain weak acids which are multiprotic in nature means they lose very different, they have more number of protons, they have more than one protons which they lose at various pHs. For example, H3PO4 phosphoric acid, it has three H plus ions which it loses at three different pH values. So, it will, so the, at every pH value, what is the concentration of the base and acid, it can be determined from this particular equation. So I hope I have uh, described, I have described all the important aspects of acids, bases and buffers from the biochemical point of view. And from next class onwards, we'll discuss about protein biochemistry. So first we'll discuss about amino acids. If you all have any query regarding this particular 
lecture you can ask me in the comment section or on the email id provided so i'll be happy to answer all your queries and doubts and wishing you all the luck for your preparation thank you